He's done four powered flights and he's killed, murdered. People are dead. Four people. Houston, we have a problem. What's going on, everyone? It's Jaron Ism back with another video for you today, tonight, or this morning, wherever you might be. And today's topic is going to be on Virgin Galactic. I'm sure you know who they are. That's Richard Branson's company. And so Richard Branson is, like I said, the owner of the Virgin Galactic. And he also has a CEO. And if you don't know who that is, his name is George Whitesides, George T. Whitesides. And George was the former deputy or head deputy behind Charles Bolden at NASA. So that's an interesting little case. But we're going to start out talking about Richard Branson. Uh, the guy is a piece of work. If you need to know, you know, what kind of exciting things are going on over at Spaceport USA, he's doing things like scaling the wall, drinking a bottle of champagne. You can find him online picking up many women for some reason and touching women, just being a strange guy altogether. But he is rich. And is he using his riches in the right way? Well, that's up to you to decide. He is definitely, like I said, a strange individual. Uh, here we see him with uh, Al Gore. He is a big pusher on this whole idea of climate change, so if that tells you something about him, it definitely tells me something about him. But yeah, the guy's uh, basically broke, not, not on and of himself, but uh, the state of New Mexico, which is one of the poorest states that there is, period. They gave him the entire $183 million to build Spaceport USA, so which is a lot of money, and he promised them thousands of jobs and all these celebrities would be coming by to purchase tickets and stay in nearby hotels and spend money in gift shops. And, of course, nothing like that has come to fruition yet. It's also started Virgin Money, and I'm going to play a video now for you and wonder if you agree or don't agree that uh, there's definitely some occult symbolism behind this video so let's check that out we've come a long long way over the last 40 years with a simple aim of making things better and now our quest takes us into banking virgin money 40 years of better now in the bank <laughs> Did you catch the end there? The hot air balloon was going up, but it hit a glass ceiling and kind of kept trying to get out of the glass ceiling by bouncing, but uh, couldn't quite get out. So I thought that was interesting. Also, I wanted to just kind of point out, you know, what this guy has done or who he is, basically. And Richard Branson is an English business uh, magnate, if you will, an investor, philanthropist. He founded the Virgin Group, which controls 400 companies. He was knighted at Buckingham Palace uh, for his service to entrepreneurship, for his work in retail and music and transport. And he's one of the most prominent figures in British culture. January 2016, Forbes listed Branson's estimated net worth at $5.2 billion, no small sum at all. His grandfather, the Right Honorable Sir George Arthur Harwin Branson, was a judge of the High Court of Justice and a privy counselor. So he definitely comes from a... I guess a family of nobility, if you will. He did start his record business, as I'm sure you know all about that, Virgin Records, which he ended up selling, but then uh, acquired a bunch of other businesses and has gone into healthcare. He owns Virgin Healthcare and also uh, has some trains. So if you saw in that last segment, the trains uh, going around, he purchased a bunch of trains in the UK. But basically the thing I want to be talking about is the orbital space launch system or the whole idea behind Spaceport USA and Virgin Galactic, which is basically told people that he's going to be selling tickets to space. But really what it is is just a parabolic flight. This craft will take off, if it ever happens, and then we'll release a, a rocket-powered craft from beneath it. So this is the Virgin Galactic flight plan. So basically this is the, uh, the you know, the mothership, as they call it, a lot of occult symbology throughout this whole thing that they do. And if you want to know how successful it is to start, this company was founded in 2004, so we're looking at 13 years. But he started talking about it in 98, so we're almost at 20 years now when he was discussing it. And basically he's been talking about sending these people 
At first, it was supposed to be at uh, 350,000 feet, but now they've scaled that way back. But like I said, you go up, it drops you out, then it shoots you up into so-called space, which would have to be above the 60-mile mark, which is the Kármán line. Um, but I don't think that they even claim that they're going to do that anymore. There is quite a few people who have asked for their money back and luckily got it because basically he now claims that they have 700 people who have purchased seats on this flight. And if that is true, and if anybody from Virgin Galactic is listening, I challenge you to please go ahead and, and release that list of people who have paid you because I tend to doubt that 700 people have given somebody who's never proven a thing $250,000. But getting back to how successful this is, he has so far done four powered flights. So we're talking 20 years. He's done four powered flights and he's killed, murdered, people are dead, four people. So in four powered flights, you've got four dead people. Uh, that is not a good rate. And I cannot see somebody giving him $2, let alone uh, $250,000 to get a ticket on this death trap, which is basically, if, would you ever get on something if uh, somebody told you, oh, yeah, we ran this particular ride at Disneyland four times and only four people have died? Doubt anybody would ever get on that ride again, yet he's supposedly still selling tickets. Pretty crazy. So, yeah, basically this is the whole trip. The whole trip takes like 30 minutes. $250,000 is a joke. For that much money, you'd be able to build yourself a balloon that could take you equal height and you'd be by yourself and you constructed the whole thing i mean you'd probably spend a lot less than a quarter of a million dollars and if he has sold 700 tickets that's 175 million dollars for something he's never proven even once can be done so pretty crazy let's look at also we're going to watch a little segment of bill nye resources and dr michelle thaler from nasa itself so the guy we're looking at is here on the left. Just watch the smirk on his face. Thanks for taking the time. We're living at an extraordinary time. Absolutely. Where space exploration is being done by governments and it's being done by you guys. So, George, let's start with you. You want to sell tickets. Yeah, we've sold about 700. So tell This little smirk just drives me crazy. I mean, this guy looks like he would steal from your wallet right in front of your face and, and just smile about it. Oh, so your company is Virgin Galactic, right? Yeah, yeah, With Richard the... Branson Space Company. Yeah, yeah, it's Richard Branson Space Company. You've heard of it. Oh, that one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you are uh, planning to fly when? Uh, when, we're, when we're ready. You know? We'll fly when we're ready, okay? Don't worry about who you give your money to. We take your money and we fly when we are ready. No, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that's never been done before, right? We're trying to open space up to you and to you. Yeah, what's and it, to you. by the way, yeah. And I'm, to all I'm... you. I mean, that's what we want to do. Who wants to go to space? Who wants to go to space? Which is something they don't even claim they're going to do anymore um, because they can't get that high. And of course, we should know that. You should know how the planes operate, how they work, how they fly. And once you get up that high, um, there's no more atmosphere. And if there's no more atmosphere, well, then everything changes. How do you steer a vehicle without atmosphere to steer against? And there's just no way to do what they are claiming they can do. And in the times they've tried to even get up to a certain level, the plane breaks up into a million pieces because, well, that's what happens when you <laughs> are trying to do something that you can't do. So let's continue on. And, and it's hard, and we got to do it right. So we'll, we'll fly when we're ready, but soon. Soon. Yeah. Uh, well, in space exploration, soon is less than 10 years, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And way sooner than that. Way yeah, sooner. Way sooner. Now. Way sooner than that. And the uh, what we're going to be going over here in a few seconds is how many times they've told us exactly when they'll be flying. Now, if I were going to buy a ticket, yeah. what would it set me back? Well, for you, Bill. <laughs> um, no, our, our price is uh, $250,000. All right. Quarter million, and we fly in space. Yeah, what I like to say is um, right now NASA is buying tickets from the Russians for about, I don't know, what is it, $80 million each? Which is classic. So if you don't know that, I think it's hugely important. NASA had these space shuttles. They had six of them. Two of them blew up, so they had four left. And all four have been retired and put into museums. And now NASA pays $81 million a seat to fly on Soyuz rockets to the ISS. 
which again, I'm not saying I believe that, but I do believe that the money transfers hands and it's all just a money um, stealing system. But $81 million per seat, you know, that's times three people. If they're sending three up, well, usually they only send one or two Americans. And that is ridiculous because we had a space shuttle. We had a craft that could fly from Earth into orbit, connect with the ISS, and they just got rid of them. So if anybody believes that horse stuff, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. There's no possible way that any company would ever do that. How could it have cost that much money to repair whatever the issues were with the shuttle? wouldn't have cost more than $81 million a person to keep those things going, but instead they're now in museums. So $250,000, it's a lot of money, obviously. But we're going to bring that cost down over time. Uh, now, you had some trouble. Yeah, yeah. We, we, had, a, we had a test flight accident, and, uh, you know, space is, space is hard, and uh, it's, it's not easy to open up the space frontier, right? It's like we live in a world where we see all this science fiction all, all, all over the planet, but... How is it not easy to open up the space frontier if NASA already knows how to go, NASA knows how to go to space. So shouldn't they just be telling people or is that like a secret? NASA keeps the secret and then tells these corporations, yeah, go ahead and go to space and try and figure it out. But we already know everything. But uh, even though you are the taxpayers that paid for it, we're not going to tell you the secrets. It's ridiculous. If that's the case, then NASA is responsible for those four people's deaths. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit here because I want you to see this guy breaks out a meteorite and passes it to Bill Nye. And then he passes it down to Whitesides. And watch the look on Whitesides' face here. Dr. Whitesides, to have a look. And uh, what's interesting about this is not only is it beautiful, but it's an object that originated in space. This one. Yeah, look at this guy's face here. Watch this. Landed in Europe. This is his response to looking at a meteorite? That is hilarious. The guy doesn't believe it more than I do. That originated in space. This one landed in Europe. He's laughing. And because. Laughing at this guy's meteorite which I would do the same thing.